so the active immunity uh, which is which a person uh, develops in his own life is called as actively acquired immunity and there are two methods to obtain it one method is naturally that means when you when a person is for the first time uh, encounters a microorganism naturally that means a disease starts and then what will happen once the encounter starts it is called as a natural infection and the other possibility is that a person is given vaccination we all know about this concept drops are given or injections are given so when active immunity a person develops but it is because of artificially developed so it is called as vaccines are administered to the body so there are two methods in this method and in this method the person's immune system fights to develop immunity now what is passive immunity when a person does not develop the immunity it is given to the person through somebody else that means passive immunity can be naturally acquired from somebody else or it can be artificially acquired from somebody else let's take example of a mother so a pregnant lady passes on to the fetus some of the antibodies for immunity through placenta we'll be talking about that in the next class and then the mother passes to the infant while she is breastfeeding the child through the milk some immunity and that is also a type of passive immunity which is naturally passed on from mother to either fetus or from mother to either to the infant remember this is not going to be a permanent immunity these are going to be permanent now uh, in the same manner passive immunity can uh, can also be administered artificially for example it is given from one organism to the patient's body in the form of injection for example we all know when a person is bitten up by a snake then uh, we cannot wait for the immunity to develop naturally the person may die because of snake bite so in such cases or we all know about tetanus in the case of tetanus also vaccination is not given but it is the anti sera which is given so ats is given to the person and uh, that is anti tetanus serum so whenever there is an immunity which is required immediately that means a body does not have our body does not have the memory to uh, develop response in future in that case we always need administration of passive immunity when body is not able to develop its own immunity we have to give passive immunity when body is able to develop immunity it is called as active immunity let's go through the detail of this concept now so active immunity is the immunity which uh, which uh, in the immunity the person's person's own cell produce antibodies in response to infection or in response to the vaccination so whether there is an infection or whether there is a vaccination so it can be natural natural means uh, it's an infection artificial means vaccination so active functioning of the person's own immune system occurs here and then the body's immune system develops antibodies and this is how immunologically active cells are produced this may take this may take few days or few weeks to work and this is a long lasting type of immunity it may develop because of infection that is naturally it may develop because of vaccination that is artificially one example i have given for example in the case of measles so it develops after the onset of certain disease or infection and artificial immunity for example for tb is in, it is induced by vaccines prepared from the microbes or their products examples we all know there are so many vaccines we know that bcg tab mmr vaccines are there now the next type of immunity is the passive immunity now passive immunity is the immunity Uh, when ready-made antibodies are directly injected into a person's body to protect the body against foreign agents, and this is called as passive immunity. It provides immediate relief, but remember, it is not long-lasting one. And remember, it may also create allergic response because human body's immune system is able to recognize that this uh, dose which is given it can be injection. it is not prepared by the self body self cells so antibodies from another person are passed on remember this person can be human or it can be another animal another organism so antibodies from one person one individual are passed on to another individual this gives immediate protection 
but the protection for, will be only for few days or few weeks or few months only because these antibodies are broken down and their numbers will slowly fall uh, because human body is not preparing it so their number will fall if it is was active immunity their number will not fall because they are prepared by human body then this passive immunity can be natural example with the help of mother's milk that mean colostrum uh, it is gained naturally and provide protection until the body's own immune system takes over so natural passive immunity passes through colostrum and passes through placenta which i have already discussed on the last page and then artificially passive immunity is given in the uh, is given in the in the cases of antisera for tetanus antisera for diphtheria and uh, the reason is uh, in this concept, uh, the antibodies are formed in one individual and it is transferred to the another individual. So this is how active immunity is different from the passive immunity. This is going to be, uh, this is an immunity in which the body's own immune system will function. Here there is no participation of the body's immune system. This may take a lot of time to start functioning. This will be a quick one to work. But this will be a long lasting one and this will be for a short duration of time. I hope the differences between active and passive is clear to you.